Hello, Stitchers. Welcome to Stitch Please, the official podcast of Black Women's Stitch, the sewing group where Black Lives Matter. I'm your host, Lisa Woolfork. I'm a fourth generation sewing enthusiast with more than 20 years of sewing experience. I am looking forward to today's conversation. So sit back, relax, and get ready to get your stitch together. Hey, friends. Hey, it's Lisa from Black Women Stitch. Thank you so much for joining me for the Stitch Please podcast. This week is a very special episode because this episode is talking about my recent trip, my recent trip to Paris for fabric shopping. Now, this was not, the trip was not for fabric shopping. It was for my 50th birthday party or 50th birthday celebration, which had been long delayed because of COVID. So I got to celebrate my 50th birthday four years later in Paris. And it was such a wonderful time. It was very relaxed. We stayed in a really comfortable neighborhood and it just felt nice to be part of a community and walk around and go to bistros and just look out and drink um, chocolate chaud, which is so good. Yummy, yummy. Anywho, It was a wonderful time. And part of that wonderful time was fabric shopping in Paris. And so this episode, we're going to talk about how I prepped for the trip, where I shopped, and then to give you a few tips, tips which are something that you will not see in Paris, on how you can um, learn a bit from my own mistakes, as well as a few things that'll help you to enjoy your time should you choose to visit Paris and buy fabric during that time. So to get started, I did some advanced prep. The first thing I decided to do was to pack half a suitcase. The objective for my advanced preparation was to make sure I had room to bring the fabric home. I wanted to figure out a way to get it from Paris here to me in Virginia. I wanted it ideally to carry on, but if carry on was not an option, I wanted it to be in my checked bag. To make that a bit easier, I only packed half a suitcase. So that was the first option. The second option, and something I've done when I've gone before, is to pack a carry on suitcase inside a larger suitcase or whatever you can do to pack a bag inside a bag. Other folks accomplish this by having a collapsible duffel bag, having certain shopping bags that can also double as carry-ons by themselves. These are ways that you can travel with conveyance items or things, you know, bags that'll help you get the fabric home. The second option is to mail a box home. Find the nearest post, Uh, the French post office, and you can mail a box back to yourself. Um, The fabric would be classified. I don't know all the customs ins and outs, so I'm going to ask you all to check that out for yourselves. But there is a way that you can mail fabric home to yourself, and that's another way. And it might take a while, but if you do it at the beginning of your trip, by the time you get back, your fabric might be there already, or it might arrive a few days after you get home. And that's kind of fun. The second thing that I did, in addition to managing the fabric, so the first thing I did was manage how I'm going to get the fabric home. The second thing was to research the area. Where am I going to find these fabrics? I knew that I wanted to find an area that had lots of different options. And a friend had recently visited Paris and had found that type of scenario in Montmartre. And that is where the Sacre Coeur, the sacred, the Church of the Sacred Heart, there's a funicular, which is like a train that runs on this track in an upward incline. It's a very iconic uh, French or Parisian monument. And there is a ton of fabric store. There's a ton of fabric stores there. So research the area so that I knew when I got there, I knew what was there. But you also want to find out what the store hours are, what the payment methods are, because some stores, as we'll learn later on in the episode, are cash only. It also helps to learn just a little tiny bit of sewing French. And I mean, for me, the bare minimum was tissues equals fabric, T-I-S-S-U-S, And then coupon, 
C-O-U-P-O-N, means pre-cut yardage. So tissues equals fabric and coupon equals pre-cut yardage. These could be folds of two meters, three meters, five meters, and they're priced as a bundle. So that is one of the elements that, you, that you'll find when you're shopping in Paris. In the next segment of the, of the podcast, we're going to talk about where I shopped. I ended up finding three fantastic fabric stores. I did not have a lot of time to fabric shop. We did have some excursions. We did have some tours. I talk about these, uh, some of these travels in the Patreon. And part of that was to kind of have a relaxed kind of trip. So that meant like not getting up at like eight o'clock in the morning so we could have like, you know, a full 12 hour day of doing things like that's that was not what we were going for. So it meant that on Saturday, which was the day that we had designated for visiting this area, we got there around two o'clock and the area closed at around 645 and then we had dinner reservations across town at 7.15. So, and because we were still figuring out the metros, we wanted to give ourselves enough time to get to the restaurant. This meant that I had about four hours to go through what looked like 80 trillion zillion fabric stores. And I was strategic. I looked at the stores that seemed to be the largest, but also had the greatest diversity of offerings within the same building. And that meant Tissues Rain and Marche Saint-Pierre. Tissues Rain was fantastic. The fabrics ranged, I believe, in price from about 16 euros to beginning at around 16 euros for apparel type fabrics and 26 euros and up for home deck, or more formal, fancy fabrics. Um, And Tissues Rain means um, fabric queen. And it was pretty regal, y'all. There were four floors of fabrics that were broken down into uh, apparel fabrics. There was home deck fabrics. There was fabrics and notions. And then there was, I think, curtains or window dressings or something like that. It was amazing. There was expert help on each floor, everywhere you went. There were people asking if you needed help or, you know, just, you know, being there as a resource. It was very big. It was well lit. The environment, I would describe the environment as bustling. And my purchases came from the home deck floor, the upholstery floor, and the fashion fabric floor. And I plan to make garments from all of it because there was so much to choose from and I knew that I did not have that much time. And so I wanted to make the most of it. I imagine these fabrics as souvenirs. And this is why I was being strategic in what I was choosing and believing that whatever I purchased would be the thing that I made as a souvenir, which is a nice extension of the trip. The next store I went to was the Marche Saint-Pierre, which is diagonally across from Tissues Rain. You can see the stores across the street, one from the other. If you're at the Marche Saint-Pierre, you can look across the street and see Tissues Rain. And the same is true on on the other side. And also the windows were open. So there was a lot of natural light. I do not know if they had air conditioning. I... I don't, it did not feel particularly cool, but it felt very, very comfortable. Or I don't know, maybe they had both, but I do remember both shops had their windows open. And that just seemed interesting to me with all the light, the natural light, which was great, as well as I hadn't thought about having like, you know, the natural air, which I thought, which I appreciated because I love me some fresh air. So about the Marche Saint-Pierre, the fabrics here were lower cost. They also had a lot of fabrics outside that were in the that were coupon that were pre-cuts and that was of a variety of different synthetic knits as well as some boucles and other wovens just a variety of different types of fabric novelty cottons some denims 
lots of different things. The price range was about eight euros and more, eight, eight euros and higher. This place was huge, five floors, each with a different specialty. Now, what I got from there was just one floor. I only purchased from the upholstery section. I got these gorgeous, bright woven art panels. I think these are going to make great pillow covers. They're great for bags. I also thought these panels would be good for the center back of a denim jacket. So those are some of the things that I was thinking of. And I need to do this when I'm when I'm traveling or shopping for travel like that, because I have to have some idea of what I'm going to do with it. Otherwise, I I just can't get it because it would just sit here and not do or be anything. And that's not why I bought it. I bought it because I wanted it to be part of my creative practice. So those were the only two stores that I purchased from during the visit to Momart. There were so many stores. I cannot tell you how many. There were just, it felt like, one store after another. They were huge. They had big basements. They had, you know, five or, you know, four different, you know, stories that went above where they were on the street level. The street level, which wrapped around the corner, was stuffed with fabric and people going through fabric and baskets and all kinds of stuff. So there was a lot to look at. And I felt pretty good about what I got based on the limited time I had. I didn't feel like I rushed and just bought something so I could say I had it. I bought something that I thought that would incorporate into what I was already doing. I saw this great fabric that I thought would be perfect for Riley. And actually, I just showed it to Riley later earlier today. And he was like, oh, I do like that. So I'm really glad that he likes what I chose. And so that because I chose it with him in mind. And so having that kind of purpose made it a little bit easier as well to to make strategic choices. And you can see the unboxing of these fabrics on the Black Women's Stitch Patreon. I do a rooftop unboxing in Paris of these fabrics there. So check that out. So that was the shopping I did on Saturday. And I had, as I said, about four hours or so. We got there around two. We wanted to leave around six or 6.30. So that's about four and a half hours. And I was able to go to lots of different stores, but chose to purchase only from two. This visit that I'm going to talk about now on Tuesday, which was our last full day in Paris. We had a lunch scheduled around 12, and then we had a dinner crew scheduled at 7.30. And during that time, we both wanted to do different things. My spouse wanted to go back to the apartment and hang out and chill and just do more leisurely things. And I wanted to squeeze in some last minute shopping. And the shopping was to visit this one fabric store that I had heard a lot about. So here we are, the, you know, with again, basically about five hours, I believe. I think I had about five hours to visit all the places I wanted to visit and did. Thank you, Paris Metro. Hey friends. Hey, I know you're enjoying the audio version of Stitch Please. And thanks so much for listening. But you're missing out on all the great stuff going on behind the scenes. That's why I'm inviting you to join our Black Women Stitch Patreon. For as little as $5 a month, you can see all the video versions of the podcast. Plus, you get some amazing swatch cards. You know how much I love these swatch cards. Look, look, see how cool these are? I. Oh, wait, you you can't. You can't see them because you are not yet on the Patreon. So when you join the Patreon, you'll be able to see this, me showing you these amazing cards. We also have some great perks at the other tiers, like discounts, swag, office hours, and more. Don't be the last sewist in the group now. Head over to patreon.com slash blackwomenstitch or click the link in the show notes and become a Patreon supporter today. We truly cannot do this without you. So thank you so much. So y'all, I really did have about five hours to do all of these little errands and things that I had that I wanted to do before we left Paris. As if Paris is going somewhere. Paris ain't going nowhere. I am absolutely planning to go back. 
But you would not have thought that given the ferocity with which I wanted to go to these places the last day that we were there. And one of the places I wanted to go was Malia Kent. Malia Kent is a haute couture fabric store. The fabrics there are manufactured and loomed in France. The designs are featured on runways for top French design houses. And their fabrics are exclusive small batch creations. The shop has a variety of fabrics and yarns. I didn't understand at the time why there were so many yarns there. The fabrics are very heavy on the boucle style, which is that um, it's a woven style fabric, I believe most closely associated with Coco Chanel suit and that classic two-piece suit for which she is known. And there was a lot of fabrics that looked like that. They also said that they made them for lots of other design houses. And you can buy the fabrics there in coupons, remember, which is the pre-cut fabric where you have the lengths already determined. Or in this shop, I believe, the pre-cuts were, they were sold by the meter and the meters were 12 12 euros or 13 euros per meter based on that pre-cut. There were also small pieces that looked almost like samples. And so you could see one that was, I think I got a few of those that were 16 by, they were like 13 by 19 or 16 by 20, 12 by 12, lots of kind of odd sizes because I believe they were intended only to be a a sample or a test. And I remember seeing people going through them and seeing these very narrow pieces. And one woman was holding a piece of narrow boucle up against her center front as if to imagine adding pieces around it to make a skirt or using it as a feature design element. Because of the nature of their manufacture, I think because they're locally manufactured, because I believe they're hand loomed, They're expensive. And the pieces there, I believe, started around 30 euros per meter and higher. I bought a few pieces. uh, I believe I bought three meter pieces, as well as a few of the sample cuts I described, like a 16 by 20 and an 18 by 18. And I saw them and thought, oh, wow, these are so visually interesting. The texture is really nice. And I thought this is going to be great for a bag. So I bought this believing that I could use it for a bag. And some of the other fabrics I got that are just so extraordinary, like things I had not seen before, I thought this is going to be really great for a special occasion, perhaps for an upcoming Frocktails. That was what I was thinking when I saw these pieces. To close up this episode today, I want to give you all a few tips, which is something you will not see in Paris. They do not do tipping there. That is a cultural practice. A few tips or bits of advice that will help you because they helped us on our trip. The first thing I'll recommend is to use the metro. Do not be afraid to use the metro. The metro is clean, it's efficient, and it is cheap. Cars move very slowly there. Traffic is really unpredictable. We took two cars. We took a taxi. They recommend taking a taxi, from not taking anything else, to and from the airport because it's a flat rate for taxis to and from the airport. But if you get in a car with someone that's not a taxi, then there's no guarantee that you won't get ripped off. So we took a taxi to and from the airport because we had a lot of luggage to deal with. However, if you're just moving yourself and just going from place to place, get a Metro card. It is so worth it. The Metro system works. They have these little tiny tickets, very small little tickets, and you have to insert the ticket to go into the train station You pick up the ticket, you take that same ticket, you use it to get out of the metro station sometimes. Those little tickets can be hard to keep up with. I, at least on one occasion, 
confused a ticket that I had thought I had used before, but I hadn't used it before. It was a mess. All is to say, get a Metro card, put some money on it, buy a day pass, buy a five day pass, depending on how often you're going to be traveling and get a Metro card. You can go all over the place in that city. It is fast. It is really efficient. It felt very safe. And it was really a good way to get around very quickly and efficiently. The Metro lets you off right at the most popular attractions. One of the ones we took was for a tour and it let us off right at the Arc de Triomphe. And that was like, oh, wow, to kind of get out of the Metro and see that thing standing there. On our last day, I was able to bounce around the city. I had about five hours to go to four different places and I was able to do it. Y'all, I got lost. I was got on I got on one metro heading the wrong way and I was like, uh uh up, uh, had to turn around. Uh, I I had forgot my passport, which is something I needed in order to buy something. I got a chance to have a cafe creme, which is a I think espresso with hot milk at a at the Louis Vuitton Cafe. And I got to buy some fabric and be on time for a dinner cruise. I was able to do that and do all of that stuff in just five hours, including getting lost and including one of the metro stations being shut down because of a social protest. The metro workers went on a one-day strike while we were there and the train still ran on time. They closed some stations, there was a slowdown and people still got where they needed to go. I highly recommend using the metro. If you are able to climb stairs, the metro is the best way to get around. I do not know, but I do believe they have options for those who are not able to climb stairs or who might need more assistance like an escalator or an elevator. I do believe they have those options, but I can't say for certain because I did not use those options, but I do recall seeing signs for them. So I would urge you to to check that out and to see if that would be right for you based on your level of ability. The second thing is to help you with the fabric shopping in particular. I'm just going to (laughs) say there is not a lot of self-serve in Paris. I did not see a lot of go do it yourself. And this was something I needed to learn or to realize is that an attendant will help you. Check the vibe of the place. Ask yourself, is the fabric stashed on rolls along the wall, self-serve? Are any other customers carrying rolls of fabric? Just as I said earlier, to reiterate, there is not that much self-serve in France. I do not think there is any self-serve in France. And that is why I have to tell you that I totally embarrassed myself by bringing fabric to the counter at the last fabric store I visited, the Malia Kent fabric store. There was this fabric that I really wanted. I I talk about it on the Patreon in the unboxing video that I do of it there. And I just thought, oh, wow, this is really amazing. So I picked it up and it was, it was, I was down in the basement. I picked up the fabric and I march up the stairs carrying this big bolt of fabric. And the woman at the counter, oh my goodness, her eyes got as big as dinner plates. (laughs) Because I have absolutely she rod this fabric up the stairs and she was like, oh, no, madame, madame, no, madame. Um, She's like, you get me. And you she was explaining what I'm about to explain to you. You retrieve the fabrics from the samples that are hanging in the middle of the store. So you'll see a lot of fabric on on hangers, almost like we have like for draperies. And at the top, there's a sheet of paper or a cardboard and it explains the name of the fabric. It talks about what it's made from. It talks about how much it is per meter. That is what you shop for. That is how you show the attendant what you want. You don't just go wandering around the the bolts as I did, though you're absolutely allowed to do that. Of course, you're allowed to look at the fabric, but I did not need to bring the fabric to her 
I was meant to bring her to the fabric. Or ideally, I was meant to bring the fabric swatch that was available, select the fabric swatch, give her the fabric swatch, then we go down together or she retrieves the bolt and then we cut the fabric. That's not what happened for me because I just grabbed my fabric off the wall. Very embarrassing, um, but they were very gracious about it. But yes, that, oof, yes, I, I was very embarrassed about that. Briefly, but very. Another thing to share in terms of a tip for you is to, re- to say that the fabric there is sold by the meter. Um, they're sold by the meter, not by the yard. A meter is 39.3 inches. And a yard, you'll recall, is 36 inches. So unlike the euro, the meter has an exchange rate that works in the U.S.'s favor. Because when you're buying fabric by the meter, you're getting three more inches of fabric than we are used to. A reminder to check your payment methods. Some places, um, the Malia Kent store, is cash only. It is a cash only place. And it would also be helpful to have some smaller bills or they have these bills. They don't have small bills. They have coins. Like I think in Canada, they call them a loony and a dooney where you have one coin is $1 or one euro and a two colored coin is two euros. You'll want some like that because at the shop when I was there, there, there was a difficult time in making exact change or giving change back. We ultimately worked it out based on what I had and what they had. And so it was fine in the end. But if I had had some smaller bills or if I had known that cash only was the requirement there, I would have had a variety of different types of, of funds to make that a bit easier. As always, sis, I'm adding this as well. If a shop attendant is acting funky, Don't buy anything. Don't buy anything. I only got a weird vibe once at one place and I pivoted right on out and enjoyed the rest of my day in a variety of amazing places. There are too many stores out there with happy, happy people, happy to help us. And we will not accept anything less. Not out there, not over here, not nowhere. So that is something to remember. Now, the Black Women's Stitch Patreon gets some fun bonuses with this Paris episode. They get to see my earlier preparation, me packing my bag and figuring that out. There's a rooftop unboxing of the fabric that I bought. There's also a video of the fabric that I bought that I did not unbox in Paris. This stuff I got from Malia Kent and, and have unboxed here at the studio And there's also an extended video of all the fabric shopping that I did. There's photos, still photos, short videos, just to give you a lot more of the behind the scenes of what I saw while I was there. Now is a great time to join the Black Women Stitch Patreon. Thank you so much for joining us today for this episode about fabric shopping in Paris. I hope that this has been helpful to you. And if you decide to go, that you can check out some of the places that I visited, as well as employ some of the tips, which I hope will be useful for your travels. Take care. You've been listening to Stitch Please, the official podcast of Black Women Stitch, the sewing group where Black Lives Matter. We appreciate you joining us this week and every week for stories that center Black women, girls, and femmes in sewing. We invite you to join the Black Women's Stitch Patreon community with giving levels beginning at $5 a month. Your contributions help us bring the Stitch Please podcast to you every week. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your support. And come back next week and we'll help you get your stitch together. 